Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Swords and Sandals. Today we are going to be building a haunted house, uh, abandoned house, one of these things right here. Boop, 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 boop. And we are going to be doing it out of foam, completely out of foam. So uh, we're going to do a whimsical haunted house today. Um, I have some kind of some ideas as to how I want to go about this, but I just know that the sides and such like that are going to be curved. Everything's going to have kind of a weird sort of um, Edward Scissorhands kind of shape. Um, I'm still debating as in regards to how I'm going to go about all of this, so it's going to kind of be a work in progress as I'm doing it. Um, there's my shingles there, I'm trying to figure it out. All right, so... Um, after the templates, print them out on paper, cut them out like normal, and then we go from there. So this foam that I'm working with right now is something that I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, it's super dense. It's like a dollar twenty for five millimeter and like a dollar for two millimeter. Um, I can cut it with a pair of scissors, um, but you have to have an incredibly sharp uh, X-Acto knife to be able to cut it any further than that. Um, otherwise it's just going to drag and tear. You cannot use foam pins. The stuff is too dense for you to put into it. Um, so this is why I had to, um, put masking tape around everything. So that way I would hold it while I'm actually gluing it down and everything along those lines. So I would recommend doing the same thing. So this may be going through the, with the hot glue here. Um, I'm doing the, the roof. I did another one just to sort of test. And the other one in the background with all the pins in it is um, regular foam core. It did not work. I tried a bunch of different materials like cardboard and everything. And honestly, it, it, this was the best material for it because you can shape it and, and twist it around. And, and honestly, honestly, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, honestly um, it was the best material um, that I could find, except that I still had a lot of problems along the line. Um I got better with it as I went along, but <clears throat> so I'm still gluing all this together. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about just here or why this is so fascinating, but um, I got it all glued together. Everything's there. Um, I cut out. These are all of the accessory pieces for the uh, door frames, window frames, all that kind of stuff like that. Um, I am putting together the dormers right now that are going to go on the roof. Um, uh, it, it's kind of tedious, um, and I burnt myself quite a lot. I, I, I am not a fan of hot glue. I really am not. Um, but it does get the job done. Um, the thing is, put a nice little chunk of hot glue on this stuff, because this foam, um, believe it or not, the hot glue won't actually set into the to the foam. So it's a little tough. Uh, there's, there's some learning curves here. Um, but... Um, so this is the tower that I'm putting together. Um, let's just say this is all kind of, I'm just trying to figure this out. I had to snip it along because at this point I really wasn't very good <laughs> at uh, putting all this foam together. But um, here I am finally figuring out where it goes. Now, obviously this is important too to put this one down because it's going to curve the roof. And then I'm trying to fill in the gap here with some glue because it's still going to, um, you know, I can't smooth out the edge. You know, um, so I'm about to put the dormers on and glue them. I will recommend right now, don't do that. Um, do the dormers, fix them, get all the, get the roof on them, get, get everything there, and um, all the shingles, all the siding, do everything like that, and don't put the dormers on till last, because otherwise it's just kind of a pain in the butt to get your fingers in there to put shingles around the sides of them and stuff like that, where you can just kind of sit it on, fill in the gap and move on. So, <clears throat> um, you're going to have to forgive my voice. Sorry. I just came over a really bad cold. So, um, I needed to hurry up and get this video out. Um, so I, uh, I drew little patterns on the front there just to see where I wanted the windows to be. Uh, ultimately I ended up flip flopping them around and, um, that's why, that's why it doesn't match up there. But, uh, I went through, got all the pieces. Um, it's very easy to mix these things up. I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but, um, if you're going to follow the template at all for these windows and such like that, you're going to have to keep them separate. Um, now originally I was thinking of just painting the windows black. Um, I thought that might be kind of an easy thing to do, but I decided to go a different route here in a little while. Um, 
probably about halfway through the through the build that I, I changed directions. Um, so here I am putting on the roofs and yet again, I say, you see, you can see the little detail, right? Like the, the spaces trying to get up in there. It's hard to paint it. It's hard to get the shingles. It's hard to get everything else to do right. So if you did all that separately and then you just trimmed it down to fit on the roof, uh, I think that would be a much better option than the way I did right here. Um, so let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay. So this is that two millimeter foam and I got tan. Now the great part about this, it comes in like 15, 16 different colors. So you really don't need to paint the stuff. You could just use all the different colors. Um, and this is why I had beige because I was kind of going to go with a different, you know, sort of a color scheme based on the foam. I eventually changed my direction in that regard as well. But um, unfortunately, there's no good way around this. I, you know, I don't know if it's better to put the window um, wood pieces around the, the window first or to do the same thing, just leave it afterwards and cut it all out. Uh, I'm not really quite sure. Um, I kind of feel that maybe it might be a good idea just to go ahead and just put siding around the whole thing and then put everything on top of it. But I kind of wanted it to have that sort of um, mismatched kind of look. Um, you know, to add to my whimsical kind of concept there. Um, and then I'll just sped this up here because this process took quite a while to do. Um, I think ultimately, I think I spent about maybe nine hours on this thing completely. So it's, we're looking at like maybe an hour or two just for siding. Um, only the front though. The front was the only real problem. So I get all this together and then I start, um, you know, side to side, getting all of that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Some of this was actually pretty easy. And now you can see on the corners here, um, I don't really have it overlapping too much. I just have it going to the end of the, the side. Um, I wasn't really quite sure what I was going to do with that. Uh, inevitably, I ended up putting some corner pieces here, like right here. So, unfortunately, this is going a little too slow. I'm, yeah, I'm going to slow down here. Um, but I start cutting out here we go right there I start cutting that out a little bit with the hobby knife um, again this is, has to be very sharp I had to go through two or three just for this one thing um, and then I cut a little piece out in the foam so I was able to take a five millimeter and just put it in the line there which is cool um, this is me putting down the shingles um, I decided to go with sort of a round one um, thought it looked a little bit more I don't know, sort of old school kind of cottagey kind of thing. Um, doing it the way I normally do. Shingles all the time. But there we go. Finished it up. I had cut a couple of holes, obviously, and everything to make it look a little bit different. I, um, because there wasn't anything going on to the back there, I wanted to break it up and make it look a little bit more interesting. Um, so that's why I kind of did everything in the back there. Um... I don't know why I'm, I do this stuff out of order all the time. I really don't know why. I can't just focus on one side. I, I get bored with one side, and then I stop, and then I move over to something else, and then I move over to something else. It's always so hard to keep up sometimes. But now I decided to go with these sort of flat shingles to fit over and fill in the gaps, uh, sort of like these coverings. I didn't know if it was going to look right, but um, I decided to go along with it and just make it happen. Um, now... The reason that I'm using this paper is because I'm also, once I've decided and finalized the size and shape, then I actually have to put it on paper and trace it out so I can use it for the template. So uh, you guys will have a template. Um, I'm going to end up making these pieces one long piece because right now for this model, I ended up putting making them separate. But ultimately, one long piece is going to be much easier to just kind of fit and glue together. Um, that's also the pattern, the way that I put, where I put the dormers. So if you don't put the dormers exactly the way I put them, this top piece is not going to fit correctly. So you're going to have to make it kind of, you know, work for whatever you're working with. It's not a big deal. I say the stuff, the, especially the thin stuff is very easy to cut with a pair of scissors. Not a big deal at all. Um, but my template will give you the ability to at least, um, you know, figure out where you have to go first. I don't know why I keep saying um so many times, so sorry about that. Let's see. I think this is the last 
piece that I'm going to put on there. And then I have these corner pieces on the top of the roof there that actually pull out quite a bit to create this sort of rounding edge, um, sort of overhang on the edges. I thought that actually worked out pretty well. And, and it also came, it became a really good cap for uh, under the shingles there. So I'm filling in the gap there with some little short shingles. Just trying to make that work. Hot gluing them because um, well, this is actually a very good point here. Uh, so this foam, because it's so dense, uh, I use tacky glue for most everything. But tacky glue does not soak into the stuff. It stays right on the surface. And sometimes, if it doesn't get a lot of air, it takes days to dry. So you have to do a little bit at a time if you're using tacky glue to make sure that the stuff sticks. Um, eventually here, I'm about to put in some uh, Mod Podge. And Mod Podge is going to seal this whole thing up. And once it finally dries, which took a whole day for the stuff to dry, once it finally dries, it's going to seal it all up. Now, I finally decided to cut out all the windows and the doors and put them independently. I still wasn't quite sure at this point where I was going to go with it. So I was just trying to decide which would work best. So I just kind of said, okay, wood panels need to go on the door no matter what. So I'm just going to piece it together with some scraps that I have and hope for the best. I think it actually ended up turning out pretty well, actually, after all. So here's the Mod Podge. I'm just sort of pouring it all on and getting a nice good coat. I say, this is going to take a, a good solid day for this stuff to really dry. Uh, I'm getting it everywhere. Um, and obviously, you can see it's running all over the place. But <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> So, uh, that was, you know, you got to watch it with this, with this Mod Podge, because uh, I decided to not mix anything with it. I wanted to keep it pure Mod Podge, so that this way the stuff would dry, and I wouldn't water it down with anything else. So, this is actually a really light paint. This is the base. I decided that I didn't want the colors that I had put on here. I wanted to make them all pretty consistent, and my coloring... I want to kind of do this sort of black and white movie kind of haunted house thing, whatever. Um, and so I mixed um, a medium gray with some more white to kind of get this sort of pale, pale gray. Um, and uh, and this is where I find out for the first time that gluing the dormers on, well, actually probably the second time, gluing the dormers on before doing all this stuff is a real pain in the butt. Um, okay, so here we are. So everything's there. Uh, this, at this point, I'm just trying to decide if the door is going to work or not. Um, I think it does, but I don't really know where I'm going to go with it. So I just kind of put it off to the side for the time being. Um, so I want to glue the top on here to create some stability um, for the tower. But I realized that now that I have cut out the windows, everything's white on the inside. So you could, and because I used white foam instead of black foam, I have to go back here and paint. Uh, the inside's black, so this way when you look through the window, it's not going to be just this bright white kind of thing. kind of ruins the illusion, which, yet again, here are the dormers being a real problem. So make the dormers, if you're going to cut out the windows, make your base foam out of black, so this way it'll already be black on the inside. Um, so this is me painting everything else black on the inside. I am leaving the area around the door the front door, white, only for the time being because I'm not sure where I'm actually going to glue the door. Um, at this stage, I'm pretty sure I was going to glue the door flat. <clears throat> but I was thinking that maybe open... <clears throat> excuse me, just a second. Good Lord. Okay, so, sorry. <clears throat> So I, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. So this is actually, I decided that I, early on I had I think I was thinking about a chimney. I just didn't like where it was going and it was really hard to put together. I figured it would be a really hard for everybody else to put together with some templates that I made. So this is a simple little box kind of shape to be a cellar doors on the side of the house. I figure, you know, all those root cellars is kind of creepy for a house. So maybe like a root cellar entrance would be fine. So... This is really simple. Um, I'm going to end up covering it with little like wood paneling kind of thing from foam. Um, okay, so I've decided that the door is actually uh, going to work for what I need it to work for. 
So here I am just priming the thing up, letting it sit so I don't get paint everywhere. Uh, and then I'm going to, I just walk away. I don't know why I want. Here we go. Oh, I'm back now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so this is finally the thing I'm going to put on the top of the tower. I could not figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, so finally, I just decided to put some sort of round thing and see if the foam would actually do what I wanted to do. Um, which is why I think this foam is, is pretty handy in many cases because once I get these pieces, I, I kind of pre-curl the foam to make sure it doesn't pop up on me. Um, and then I just basically glue it in and I create this sort of dome, um, half circle, I guess, dome, probably not a dome, half circle, um, that's going to fit on the top and see this hot glue actually did a pretty good job, I think. Um, you definitely don't want to use tacky glue for this because it, it, you need it to get its shape pretty quickly. So there I am putting it and gluing it down to its base so I have a little more flexibility with moving it around. You could have put the roof on first, you know, the topper on it, but who cares? Um, I decided to go this way around. Um, and then now I just glue in the hot glue in the edges. I leave again for whatever particular reason. I have no idea why. Um, and then, okay, so... A little bit of glue, pop it in there. Uh, now I primed it with the same white, or sorry, same gray. And so there's that. So all the pieces on the edges. There was no point in me showing this because it's really just doing the same thing I'm doing for the rest of the model. I just cut out little V's, uh, little triangles to, to simulate like a hinge kind of thing. And so once I decided, I get, you got to lay it flat because it's not because the curve on the, on the wall is going to be a little off. So uh, it's going to create a gap. So I don't, I want it to be able to sit and not bunch up. So this is why I have to use glue to fill in the gap a little bit, right? So once that, you know, once that's all dried up, it actually, once it go back and paint it, it's going to be fine. So here I have decided to put the door and make it open. So I had to put a little hot glue for a handle. So I just dabbed a little glue there. Same thing I'm doing for this. So I just dab a little glue and then I have to kind of tease it with some tweezers just to kind of make it round because the, of the glue trail. But I figure, you know, it's small, it's there. I don't have a bead. There's no point in this. I want to keep everything glue and foam. I don't want to use any other materials for this. But And here we go. So it's not the greatest thing in the world and because I'm having a hard time finding an angle. But there we are. So you just get a little bit of glue dip, tips there, and you create a little handle. And um, when you paint it again, it's going to paint it. So there you go. Um, that little thing over here on the side, that was a base. I opted out away from that, just like with the stairs. Um, because I cut the whole door out from top to bottom, <laughs> uh, I didn't leave any space for the stairs. So I had to leave the stairs off. So if you want to put the stairs on there, do not cut the whole door out. Leave the gap <laughs> for the, um, leave the gap for the stairs. So that way they have something to glue to. Um, I think the stairs would have been a nice addition, but I, I don't think it actually takes away from it too much. So this paint that I'm actually using on the edges is just maybe two shades uh, darker than the um, than the uh, than the ones I use for the whole prime. I just wanted it to be a little bit different, so when I go in and put the wash in, it's going to still be a little bit darker, but not too dark. Um, because I've decided to just opt away from wood grain and any kind of texturing. Uh, I just wanted to see what I could do with the paint itself. And so here's this homemade wash that I made um, specifically, specifically for this. I don't actually make wash now ahead of time as far as like keeping wash on stock because wash just seems to settle to the bottom too much. And um, I just make it when I need it. Uh, I, don't, I don't like keeping a bunch of it around. I do have wet water and stuff like that that I use because it's okay. You just shake that up and you're good to go. But all the sediment drops to the bottom in the stuff and it's just so hard to maintain. All right, so I'm going to continue through <clears throat> with all of this. Um, obviously, I'm being pretty um, loose with it um, because I'm, I'm not really quite sure if I'm going to actually end up having to do it once or, uh, or twice. Now, I ended up putting about 20 drops of ink in that little bottle. So I ended up making it maybe a little stronger than I really intended to. Um, I guess this is the one downfall of, of, uh, of making washes as you go. Because you're not really going to know. You have to test the stuff out first. And I did. I just didn't think it was going to be really that 
uh, that dark. Um, well, if you hear a dog, so sorry. Um, I, I live in an apartment, and apparently my neighbor left. So, yay. <laughs> All right, so uh, anyway, so so you can see I'm going back now because, again, the wash doesn't dry. I ended up getting these sort of drip deposits all over the thing so i had to kind of go back and make sure that those drips aren't there because they're going to make the whole thing look really weird so uh, i'm almost done with it i just have sort of like the you know uh the pieces of wood that bar you know people from trying to get in the thing um i just took basic um you know five millimeter foam i actually did prime it right in the video it looks white but it's actually the color of my base uh base color that i did so I'm just kind of playing around here and um, and putting this down. I say I like the idea of the door being open a little bit because it's kind of inviting but not inviting. Um, so here I am just kind of putting some stuff in there, and then um, and now I was gonna put something over here for like for safety, but then I decided that nobody's there for safety. It's to try to keep people out. So I decided to put like you can see the rafters. So that was kind of like where I was going with that. <clears throat> made them a little smaller and then obviously you know if you're going to have a cellar root root cellar kind of access you need to block that off too you can't have people coming in from the bottom so i just decided to put that on there and i, I left these the way they are because i just like the way they stand out you know the contrast from them all right well so that is a wrap um so obviously we have the finished edition it did not go entirely as planned i had to uh, make quite a few changes along the way i have to admit um <clears throat> part of this foam i kind of actually enjoyed another part of it was a real pain in the butt um it's super dense so it's really hard to work with sometimes so i thought this would be a really cool kids project something pretty whimsical you know with different roofs and different angles and all these different things along those lines uh, and it would be pretty easy to make with foam. Uh, but this foam still had its ups and downs. Uh, you can cut it with a pair of scissors, which is awesome, but it shears it. It always puts it at an angle. And mostly it's not that big of a deal, but it can prove uh, troublesome at times. Um, <clears throat> just getting over a cold. <clears throat> so... Um, I have to admit though, uh, it turned out pretty well, I think overall. Um, I kept everything, um, if you can see it in here, let me see. I kept all of the sort of slats, sort of this uh, pale gray that I started off with when I primed the whole thing. I, I liked the contrast that it created when you set it on the shelf. Let's see if I can kind of get it back here. Yeah, I like that contrast. You know, it, it really, it really helped out. Um, but you know you can do whatever you want you can put them however you want as far as the template's concerned uh obviously i didn't use the stairs but i'm still going to leave them in the template because you might not want to do the door the way i did um i included this little uh cellar access if you wanted to do that as well um i even included this thing up on top here this little doodaddy in, in the template just in case as I say, the nice part about it is, you know, you can sort of pick and choose what you want to do. Maybe you want to kind of come up a little bit higher. Maybe you can create a bell tower, kind of like what we did in the uh, the uh, the church over here. Um, so you can kind of do whatever you want to. Sky's the limit. But uh, this will be included uh, on my Patreon account, so you can find the links below for that. Uh, when I got past the frustration of working with this foam, I, I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, so uh, please like, subscribe, friend, whatever, comment. All those things you're supposed to do on social media. And check out my Patreon page. Please do this. Help me out. Contribute just a little bit. Help me keep going and doing this on a more full-time basis. Uh, and I can do a lot more of these things and provide you the templates as well. Uh, until then, see you next time. Keep building.